Welcome to High Heels in the High Country. I'm Rob Cope Williams. Well, daring has obviously changed the face of Canterbury, but women have been part of that change. It's hard to miss the giant Sinlay milk factory south of Dunsandal. It's a visible sign of the changing use of Canterbury Plains from dry land sheep farming to irrigated dairying. The milk factory opened in 2008. But the Sinlay farm story began seven years earlier when Juliet McLean set up a business with two other directors. We were looking for a way to grow our business and at that stage the Waikato was really quite a mature um, market and a mature industry from Deering's point of view. And we couldn't find um, a really cool opportunity that would allow us to take the small amount of capital that we had and grow our equity for the future. And that meant that we started looking in the South Island which where Deering wasn't as well established um, in the early 2000s and where we felt there was was more opportunity for us to grow um, a business and so we ended up buying a large sheep farm, a dryland sheep farm at Tiparita and converting that to dairying. We didn't have sufficient capital to do that ourselves so we uh, attracted some investors who were like-minded predominantly dairy or agriculturally interested people and we put together some funding alongside the bank and were able to do the first conversion. Um, that was the first part of the Sinlay business at Tiparita. And now how big is it? So now the farming part of the business is four and a half thousand hectares. Uh, we milk around 13,000 cows on 13 farms and the other arm of the original business is Sinlay Milk and so Sinlay Milk is based um, at Dunsandal and collects milk from around 150 farms which is manufactured into a range of milk powder and infant formula products. What started with the conversion of a dry land farm to irrigated dairying has grown into 13 farms with over 3,000 cows, supplying the Sinlay milk powder manufacturing plant in Dunsandal. With the increase in size and scope, Sinlay Farms requires a different type of leadership from Juliet. My role now is leading the farming part of the business, so Sinlay Farms. And I look at my role, I suppose, in a couple of ways. Um, one of my key tasks is to look after the strategy and the value of the business for the shareholders of the business. And so in that um, space, I report to the Sinlay Farms Board. So uh, developing the strategy and implementing the strategy is important. Uh, I also see that it's very important to keep my team safe. And so it's one thing to talk about developing and offering career paths for people in the business, and that is very important, but making sure that the team have got the resources that they need to run the business and keep themselves safe every day is really important as well. And I think that's something that um, agriculture has become much more focused on and will continue to do so, is making sure that we have a fun, productive and safe workplace and for me it's also really about taking people and understanding their goals and then being able to offer them training and support and career opportunities to achieve their goals. I'm a firm believer that if both parties can benefit from the employment relationship then the overall business will be better because of that. And so alongside that, my role is obviously making sure that we have the right resources for the farms to run um, productively and profitably. And so it's quite a broad ranging role really, which is why I love it. There's a lot of variation every day. I love getting out on the farm. That was where my career started. And as the Sinlay business has developed, and obviously it's a little bit more challenging to achieve some of those goals that I described from the paddock, I now have to have a balance between some office time and some networking time and board time. 
yeah. but I love nothing better than to get out on the farm with, with the cows and the people because you understand much more clearly what's going on if you actually are out there looking and being with the team and you know at the cold face is, is the terminology I think but there is something in that you know absolutely understanding what's going on with the business. So where to from here I mean you've made you must have put a lot of stakes in the ground and, and work back to get to them? Mm. I think the, um, we've changed the structure of the Simlay business a little bit over the last couple of years. So our original vision was to have a business that was integrated from the paddock through to the product to the customer. And for various reasons, we've we've changed the structure. So Simlay Milk and Simlay Farms are quite separate businesses now and in the last year we've changed um, the shareholding in Sinlay Farms and so I have a new major shareholder um, who's involved in the business now which is fantastic and so we have a shared vision to grow the business again and that might be by increasing uh, the number of farms that we have in the land area but I'm also very cognizant that we've got some really great potential in the business as it is now and that's from not not only developing the farms that we've got, but also by developing the people further in the business. And so focusing on doing what we're doing even better alongside some growth in the business. And I think we've chatted about it before. My vision for Sinlay Farms is to be the best multi farm business, the best multi farm dairy business in the world. And so that's what gets me out of bed every day is focusing on that goal. Sinlay Farms has been very successful achieving its goals. They won the Lincoln University Foundation South Island Farmer of the Year competition in 2012. Announcing the award, Chief Judge Bob Simpson said that Sinlay's blend of family-based traditional farming practices with the very best of modern corporate innovation and management made this multi-farm company stand out. It's nice to have third party independent um, verification that you're heading in the right direction and I think that was nice and as you know there's been a lot of people have been a little bit sceptical about larger dairy farming businesses and about corporate farming and I think it was a nice way for um, us to be able to display and have people recognize you know the way I described it was we're no different to any other farming business we're just a much bigger farming family and I think uh, you know that's important that people understand that you can have a business with some scale but that it holds on to all those values that are important and that have grown uh, farming in New Zealand in the past and that's certainly what I'm trying to do. Is there room for another Juliet to get a couple of people to go into business with and with her and become a Sinlay? Is there room for that? Well, I think one of the really exciting things about farming, be it dairying or sheep and beef farming um, or other aspects of agriculture in New Zealand is there's still great opportunity and one of the goals that I've got for the business and I think agriculture needs to focus on a little bit more is how we improve our levels of productivity. And you know that's doing what we're doing now by putting less in and making sure that we reduce waste and that we are very focused on the outputs we get from um, the inputs that we use. And you know, people are focusing a lot more on sustainable farming, on using technology, on being innovative. And that means that there's opportunity for you know not only women but people just to think about what they do and how they do it better in agriculture and there's heaps of opportunity there. I don't see there any barriers to women being involved um, in farming. I think it's a fantastic career for women and certainly do everything I can to encourage both at the education um, level but also at the post school or university level women really not seeing being involved in agriculture as too hard or not what is um, available to them but just the huge range of opportunities that are there um, for women to be involved. So that's really important to me as well. And women are setting their minds to take on any and all the roles in the rural sector previously dominated by men. 
whether it's rural vets or stock and station agents, women are stepping up into the roles once occupied by their fathers and brothers. It's a development that Juliet finds encouraging. Mum and Dad were sheep and beef farmers and so I went to the little local primary school in Tapora and all of my spare time was spent out on the farm um, with Dad and we had ponies and that sort of thing and then after I finished at boarding school I went to Massey University and did a Bachelor of Agriculture. When I finished at uni beef farming was really the thing that I most enjoyed. Um, but I went away for a couple of years and did um, the mandatory overseas experience which was great and actually became involved in the hospitality industry for a little while which gave me the opportunity to understand that there was is something beyond farming and when I came back became involved in dairy farming rather than beef farming and um, because I saw it as a way to establish a career and that would allow me to build equity and have ownership in farming in the future and so worked in dairying um, through traditional channels of share milking in the Waikato for 13 years and then with two business partners started the Sinlay business in 2001. So very much my focus through my whole career has been involved in agriculture. As a director of Sinlay Farms, Juliet is one of the leading figures in dairying in the rural sector. As a successful woman in an industry once dominated by men, she's made it her mission to encourage and enable other women to follow in her footsteps. For me personally, obviously I have a keen interest in being able to offer women the opportunity to develop their careers in farming. Um, my parents never differentiated by gender and so uh, I have two younger sisters and we were always brought up to believe that we could do anything and if that was being involved in agriculture then there was no differentiation between whether we were sons or daughters and therefore I don't see there any barriers to women being involved um, in farming. I think it's a fantastic career for women and certainly do everything I can to encourage both at the education um, level Level, but also at the post school or university level women really not seeing being involved in agriculture as too hard or not what is um, available to them but just the huge range of opportunities that are there um, for women to be involved so that's really important to me as well. There's a tendency Juliet for women to do the sort of the paperwork and to help and the male does the, the pasture and the checking and the animals that's a, a misconception? I think, I mean, ultimately I think that women can do anything when it comes to farming. And in, pa in the past I think some of the barriers have been established purely because of a perception that farming is physical and that might make it difficult for women. We're really fortunate now because we've got technology that is well and truly able to overcome any of the physical barriers to doing the job. Uh, I think a little biased it may be, but I think women are great with livestock and I think in a lot of cases have a better stock sense than some men do and they tend to be great at the detail and have really um, astute empathy when it comes to livestock and people. And yes, there's some fantastic partnerships that have developed between men and women in farming, but there's also some very successful outcomes that have um, been seen over time with just women involved in agriculture in their own right. And so how a couple choose to split the responsibilities um, is up to them, but I think that women can take any part of the farming um, role that they choose to if that's what they set their mind to. And women are setting their minds to take on any and all the roles in the rural sector previously dominated by men. Whether it's rural vets or stock and station agents, women are stepping up into the roles once occupied by their fathers and brothers. It's a development that Juliet finds encouraging. To me that demonstrates a couple of things. It says that the agricultural community as a whole has changed um, their perception of 
queer women fit in the industry and are now just much more open to women fitting in any part um, of the continuum of agricultural roles and I think that's fantastic and I think that women also are putting themselves forward more to be involved in a range of roles. The outcome is, is what we're after and I think the outcome is great because what you're seeing is just a whole lot more involvement which I think gives a lot more balance to the industry and that's, you know, that's what we're after at the end of the day. 20 years ago they would have been feminists, now it's, it's the women. Mm. Is that true? Oh, I think that's a really good point. Uh, you know, in general, other than perhaps some very conservative areas and some more conservative people, I believe that people are treated, you know, just the same and there's no stigma attached with a woman being really, really deeply involved with um, an agricultural business, which, yeah, maybe was the, a little bit what it was like in the past. Sharon Davy Martin proves it's not about running a business or getting your gumboots dirty on the farm. Sharon plays a vital role within the Amiri district, welcoming new people into the thriving farming community. Immigrants like Dennis are filling gaps on local farms. In Amiri alone, there's 70 farms, matched by 70 immigrants working on them. We find that there's not a lot of young Kiwi people wanting to start as assistants in the dairying sort of area. So the immigrants have become a really vital part of us moving forward. Well, finding qualified and enthusiastic dairy workers can be a challenge for some farmers, but Emma went up north to find how some farmers are helping immigrants settle into New Zealand. Sharon Davy Martin proves it's not about running a business or getting your gumboots dirty on the farm. Sharon plays a vital role within the Amiri district, welcoming new people into the thriving farming community. This part of it's been written by myself and Alex Thompson and it just outlines all the little different things in the area, what the schools are, where to ring an emergency, how to make a doctor's appointment, um, and little tips about the house. Sharon hands out these welcome packs to newcomers in the area, generally families familiar with New Zealand culture, but this isn't always the case. <laughs> Meet the Medbury Farm, located just minutes away from Sharon's own slice of paradise. Dave Hislop employs workers from overseas. People don't actually realise the skills that they've actually got, that they've got un can have undergraduate degrees or postgraduate degrees and they've only uh, employing them as uh, labour. Dennis and Joel are immigrants from the Philippines and have been working in New Zealand for more than four years. Both have degrees from their own country. Dennis arrived in New Zealand with a Bachelor in Agricultural Technology. Because I am an agriculturist, yeah. And uh, that's my vision in my life to, to be a farmer. Yeah. Immigrants like Dennis are filling gaps on local farms. In Amuri alone, there's 70 farms, matched by 70 immigrants working on them. We find that there's not a lot of young Kiwi people wanting to start as assistants in the dairying sort of area. So the immigrants have become a really vital part of us moving forward. And is this a match made in heaven? While providing the community with welcome packs, it's opened Sharon's eyes to an entire different side of immigrants adapting to life in New Zealand. Is it surprising to see how they're being treated when they come into our country? Yeah, it's really disappointing, um, particularly because they're such a vital part of, of our agricultural community now. Um, yeah, it saddens me, really. There's lots and lots of people, it's only the minority, but still that minority is sad. These workers are arriving with university qualifications in their hands, just as any farm worker in New Zealand has. But are they being treated equal? There's still instances where they're being paid a little less than they should be, maybe, and 
or more than, less than they're worth, um, certainly within the legal boundaries, but you know, not not really being recognised for what they're worth. Often it's a matter of adjusting to the culture and way of life in New Zealand. It's a real culture shock when they come. Most of them borrow money, leave their families, their children, and this is men and women, and come here to try and create a better life for their families back in the Philippines. And if, they, if they're lucky enough to bring them over, then the families get to, to share in that. On the Medbury farm, it's all about helping with that culture shock. I'm pretty hot on that these guys actually do something too and integrate into a community. Um, because that's how they become passionate about our job and being passionate about daring. Dennis has become one of those lucky ones, although it hasn't always been smooth sailing. I have a bad uh, experience in a previous employer and they've adopted me as, treated me, fair, fairly treated me like a friend. Yeah, and I'm very happy to have to work here. And good news. His wife is now following him to New Zealand, moving over from the Philippines this month. And it's outcomes like these that Sharon always hopes for. Which is, you know, something that we're passionate about too, not letting people get left at home, becoming stressed and depressed or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, no matter where they come from, if they're living in the area, Sharon counts them as a Cantabrian. But if we can bring them into our community as well, and if we can come into these a little bit, you know, there becomes a real mutual respect. That's our high heels in the high country, the program that profiles women on their road to success.